welcome to this week's episode of the Board and Scale podcast. You have all three of us people who belong here and not a single person more who is never here and doesn't want to be here. So I flipped off the camera. This, this is what you have. I don't know why. I don't know why I wanted to do that. And thanks for being here with us. We really appreciate it. We have uh, one thing we're going to talk to you about today. It's going to be a short episode. But as always, we're going to talk about our highlights and then get into a, a highly curated topic. Get straight into it. Yeah. Straight in. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Board and Scale podcast, Battle of the Games. Board and Scale's first ever snake video. Another vendor spotlight. That the penguin's the only one with any character. What you're likely to hatch when you mix certain genetics. Okay. This is Kevin. Yeah. What highlight. Was your wiki highlight. Wiki. <laughs> we- highlight of the week. Um, so I'm going to give it to Castles of Burgundy. Yay. Yeah. Um, we played it for Battle of the Games. Uh, it was one of, I think it's Ken's number one. Yep. Right? Um, of course, they have the uh, special edition. With all of the 3D terrain tiles, the acrylic tiles. Minus uh, one set. I did bring my set of acrylic tiles to round out the, the experience. So we can have the full complete experience and have workers and the terrain. Not terrain, but... Workers, whatever. vineyard, um, scoring markers, and um, the bonus scoring tar- tiles. Yeah. So rounded out the acrylic stuff. Yeah. Um, if you're one of the unlucky people who missed that, um, I do believe the game found campaign is still available. I'm gonna wait till this till it's over to upload this, so there be some people like that guy said <laughs> it was available. <laughs> I'm not 100 percent sure. I think it is still. <laughs> I think you can still late pledge it. So uh, I think they learned their lesson this time. Uh, but at any rate, uh, sun drop miniatures are gorgeous. It is such a tactile, fun experience. Um, delightful game. Um, it does get, it is a, the, the luck mechanism is, is primarily dry, dice driven, which can be titanically frustrating. <laughs> um, there are mitigation techniques um, with the workers. You can plus or minus your die. There are monasteries and other things that you can get that can give you some abilities to either get more workers, uh, make your workers plus or minus more, uh, make your dice just naturally plus or minus one already for specific stuff for for specific things Uh, but at the end of the day can still be very limiting Um, and it is also very competitive space so if somebody grabs something that you want um, it can really slow you down because the way that the the boards are played out with the 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 die numbers on them and and whatnot so it can get a little bit it can get a little bit frustrating at times when the dice just aren't working your way Um, I think that's something I've talked about on on these pods before that like when it comes to luck bake me- luck based mechanisms, luck bake luck baking luck, luck mechanism. <laughs> uh, I don't like dice. I don't like them that much. I don't feel like, for some reason, the agency like it. It came out of your hand. You did that. Man, you- I'm glad one of my top five games doesn't have dice in the name. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting though because the more die you throw, the things get better. I and- love dice driven games. Yeah, you're a luck guy. I don't know. I, I you're a luck guy. A you luck like guy. luck more than a I do. A lucky luck boy. And I like my luck less. Less. I like it. I like deck. Just keep workers on you, bay boy. Yeah, bay boy. <laughs> bay bay. Yeah. Gotta get them workers up. Uh, I like luck when it comes like uh, like if I give me my deck of cards, let me shuffle them. The shuffling thing, like I feel for whatever reason that you're fine that, with it. That feels better. Yeah, it feels like it's okay. But I have experienced dice games that I do feel like the the die stuff is better managed. Um, Encyclopedia? You haven't played it in a minute. I haven't played it in a minute, but of course you get to pick other people's stuff, which does help because it's just a larger pool. And you can prioritize the things that you must have, mm-hmm. right? Um, Twilight Imperium, uh, for me, does dice really well because in combat, hits are less common. Yeah. Right. Most ships are hitting on seven, eights, nines, tens on a D10. Unless you bring out your war, son. In which case, you've basically won the game. It's yeah. over. You're rolling on fives. Um, but at any rate, um, 
it's really my only complaint with uh, Castles of Burgundy is, is that like you can just be the victim of your own bad rolling, um, which is true of any dice game. Um, again, there are mitigation techniques, um, which you do need. You just can't ignore. You just have to have some kind of mechanisms built in to help you help you deal with that. But at the end of the day, it still can be very frustrating, especially at the end of the game when you're like, "Man, I just really wish I could do this one thing, but I have a six, and I need a five. Well, I guess I have to spend an action of my last four actions to get just gain workers. Yep. And sometimes, sometimes that gets you there, and sometimes it doesn't because you needed the extra ones. Mm-hmm. That's what it comes down to. So, still a beautiful game. The mechanisms are fantastic. I didn't love the vineyard thing, the vineyard expansion. I like the I like the actions you can gain from them. I think that the scoring, the scoring, the way that it ramps up can be mm. absolutely crazy. And that's a little thing with like the tiles that come out. Sure, with more people, with less people, certain groups are taking out, certain sets are taking out. So less variety in there. Hopefully, it balances out your luck. But yeah, if someone's getting ninety-one points from their vineyard scoring from one grape, which is possible, don't forget your vineyards. Probably, they're probably winning. Don't yeah. forget your vineyards. Put I, your grapes in. Yeah, because you can't. That's the problem, though. Is is like so like. We just talked about Tapestry a little bit ago for the board, uh, Battle of the Games video. Um, that'll come up at some point. And the, one of the things that I like a lot about that game is that there is no one path to victory. Like, you can ignore things. Like, Sebastian almost won the game, and not once did he do any of the military actions. Yeah, not a single time. <laughs> right, because part of your, because your player board, you didn't want to ever take those dice off. You didn't want to be the one responsible for that. But... Um, I think the problem with Castles of Burgundy, the Vineyards expansion, is is that when you play with that, you, you have to do it. Cannot ignore it. You must play into the Vineyards, otherwise you just don't have a chance. Uh, well, I think they they try to, like I don't know, make it up, make up the difference in the fact that those actions can be very powerful. The things, the benefits you get from the board can really be powerful for you in the middle of a turn, you know, but. I, mean, I do feel like it needs to be scaled down. The scoring towards the back end needs to be scaled down a little bit. I At think, the front, it's fine. I think that might be. I think that might help the, because um, like the mitigation technique, I think was is that the vineyard tiles are two spaces, so when they go into your key spots, they're holding down two spots, so it can make it difficult to get it from, you know, the vineyard space or whatever that that's called to your board and then onto your vineyard spaces, um, but because as we watched Ken's do, right? You can the actions on that board that you get when you when you put the tiles down are basically making up for any of the things you're not doing somewhere else. Yeah. Now you may have less control over the timing, so you may not get the best like the pick of the best stuff at the right times, but you're still focusing on other stuff. And then again, if you can score 80, 90 points at the end of the game. Yeah. So Love it. Great game. Phenomenal game. I'm looking forward to playing more of it in the future. Um, yeah, that's mine. All right. Well, as, as Kevin mentioned, we just got to play Tapestry, and that will be my highlight of the week because I absolutely love that game. It is my top three game. I will play that game all the time, and if you're going to be at FlingCon, please play Tapestry with me. <laughs> I'm begging you. <laughs> I'll teach you the game. <laughs> you just have to be okay with, you know, it being... The only game you play that day. Probably, maybe the only game you play. It depends <laughs> on who we play with. If yeah. it's all new players, it'll probably be all day, but... Don't forget Monopoly. You can play Monopoly in between turns. Monopoly on the side. Hey. Take two tables. Easy peasy. You know? It's two Civ games, right? Two? Is? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Building your civilization. Building your... No. Your, I don't know. your Monopoly. Your Monopoly. Em- your empire. Monopoly Empire. Monopoly Empire. But yeah, Tapestry, my highlight of the week. Uh, if you haven't played it, what are you doing? Go to the store right now. I don't care if you're watching this at 2 a.m. Go to Walmart. Somebody just messaged me on Instagram, actually, saying, you know, the more times I keep seeing this get posted, I might have to try it. And I was like, yeah. Tell you them, come you on need over. to play it. Come on over. You have to play it. Who is it? Play Tapestry. Um we're not going to dox folks. Some person I don't know. Actually. Oh, really? Okay. Stranger. Well, I mean, well, yeah. No, you're it's fine. another board game. Not one of our. It's another board game account. Board yeah. game person. 
it's it, yeah. it's interesting though because I don't think Tapestry gets a lot of a lot of hype, which is right? wild doesn't. to me. Well, you have to also think about it in the context. So I think there's two things going against it. One, the other Stone Mirror games are some people would argue that they're better, right? Sure. Just they're more popular, right? Yeah. At the end of the day, they're more popular. So when you think about their lineup, it gets pushed towards the middle or towards the bottom. The other thing is, is that if I remember correctly, the cover of Pendulum. Oh, yeah. Looks similar enough to Tapestry. I thought I would always get them mixed up. Mm hmm. I think you. there might be enough people <laughs> out there who like who equate the two who just kind of see them and go, are these part of the same game mechanism? Like I've heard Pendulum's bad. I've never played it. Um, can't speak to it. I just know what people say. And he never will play it. OK, sorry, Ever. Jamie, if you're watching this, I would give it a shot. If somebody he's only it, saying no, that because you might be watching this. <laughs> he's not watching it. It's OK. I won't repost my 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 anytime I tag him on Sag. Mm, yeah. Sorry, totally I hijacked your stuff. But yeah, I think that might be why. Oh, I was gonna say something else. I forgot. It's a great game. You love it. I love it. It's a great game. Play it. It's worth it. Play it. I do think that I it never got, goes on sale either. I don't think. No, I do think that. Oh, part of the and I think people were afraid of it. Not afraid of it, but like doubtful of it in the beginning. Because the gimmick of Tapestry was that the rule book was only four pages long. And it was, here's a civilization game that you can play. And the rule book is only four pages. Mm. And the entire rule book was, it explained how you do your your advance mm -hmm. and how you do your income. And then it was like reference. Symbology. Right. A lot yeah. of it. Which is it is obviously with all the expansions, that rule book has now <laughs> grown. And it's like 20 pages, which is a lot of references and icons and symbology and clarifications of stuff all the new stuff but i do think that that scared people off at you know people who see a big game and expect a big game and then they yeah. go oh this has a gimmicky little baby rule book it's going to be way too simple to be any kind of fun right but i think that the simplicity of the gameplay is what makes it so fun for me because it can be a very in-depth game strategically while remaining i do this or i do this on my mm -hmm. turn so yeah, I love it. What's your highlight? Siege, but no, I'm just kidding. No, it's not. <laughs> I was like, it's not. Uh, uh, Kanban EV. Oh. That was my weekly highlight, dude. I've only played it twice. That game's so fucking good. When Except did you Sandra, play? such a little uh, B word. Monday. Monday. Yeah, on Monday Ark Nova days. Ark Nova days. Apparently, I wasn't invited to Monday Ark Nova days. He doesn't like Ark Nova. You literally always hate on us for how, liking Ark Nova. I don't hate on you. I am just absolutely flabbergasted by the fact that you've put down like a hundred plays collectively between like in person <laughs> and online. And it's a lot. It's not a hundred. Uh, last Dwayne clocked in was fifty-seven online plays. Oh my gosh, dude! And you still lose that much in person? I beat you twice the past two times we played. Uh. Just want to say that. Yeah. Anyways, I, I like it. It's a great game. I just, uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, variety I, is the spice of life, right? I for one, that's why I play games like Tapestry. I thought you didn't like Ark Nova one, and I thought Mondays you were not available. No, I love. I mean, I like Ark Nova a lot. Like I would probably not even hesitate to. I definitely put it in my top twenty five. I knew you didn't like. I knew you did not not like it. I thought you just didn't care for it. No, no, I think it's a great game. I love it. It's there's the the few wait. I guess we're gonna have to wait for a this while also, for the review to come out. But yeah, it's it's a phenomenal game. I think it's great. I I just yeah, I just I guess I'm just it's just shocking how much you guys like it. I'm like it's a solid, great game. But like it's amazing, dude. You could like for the number of times you play that, like how come you don't play games like Brass as often as that? Because that's not right? something that. Like all three of us. I'm not trying to whip out brass every week. You see? I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to look at that black ass boy. You see, <laughs> no, and obviously I know like the theme makes a lot of like difference, especially for, for for the two of you, especially right, animal folks. Um, but yeah, I I enjoy the game, and I am I am technically available on most Mondays. We also have been getting together at like one. This is all separate. This oh, is yeah. behind the scenes <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Okay, but it's who we are. 
Dwayne's highlight is Kanban. 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 Oh, yeah. Kanban, worker placement. Cars. Um, I really like worker placements. Um, yeah. You are putting your workers out to work shifts in a car factory, building cars. Um, depending on where you where you put your guy, you get a certain number of actions, a.k.a. shifts, to do in that department of the factory. And you can work OT, like you a true capitalist. You can go overtime. Um. And yeah, it just it the the board is top down, so you just work your way from whoever's top all the way down until you get until you get to one little pink one special lady meeple. I'm, about to, I'm about to put your editing skills to the test. This fucking beep, 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 bitch beep, beep. that we call Sandra. Sandra is a meeple. That you put on the board along with your workers. She follows. She goes to the next open spot. Top down. When she gets there. Or when you get to Sandra. You look at everyone's training in that department. Whoever's the lowest. Sandra rips into their ass. Because they don't know what they're doing. And you lose points. And depending on where you are on that overtime track. Basically extra actions that you can take. You will lose Points. It really hurt me. The you first will couple lose rounds. lots of points. She took like 18 points for me in the beginning. So much so that you start with 15 points yeah. <laughs> at Just the beginning of the game. Because they know Sandra's going to take from you. <laughs> and take from you, she will. You will not leave for the wrath getting of took from. Um, But yeah, one of the only inanimate objects that I truly despise. I hate that woman. With a passion. Hate that meeple. Yeah. Hate that meeple. Um, Meep, Meepman? Other than that, great game. I Oh, it's so good. Uh, I caved and I bought it recently after two plays. Official owner of a Lacerda joint. A Lacerda joint. The only a Lacerda, Lacerda game that I've Griffin joint. The only Lacerda game that I've played, which makes me want to play another one. Um, I know Inventions just came out. Um, no. We need, to play, we need to play On Mars, too. I have not... Uh, have not had the willpower to read through that book. Yeah, what is it? Kanban on Mars, The Gallerist. Lisboa. Uh, Lisboa, yeah. A whole lot of stuff. Weather Machine? Weather. Is that? I think so. I don't know. Because they just had a... You got a big, long, rectangular box. It's probably... There's a, don't they have a Kickstarter or a crowdfunding one out right now? Because it's, again, like you can get all the extra, like all of the, the different ones. The uh, that might be over because they have it for pre-order now on the website, mm. on the Eagle Up Griffin website. I don't remember what the game was either. And one last thing on Kanban is that the board, I know it's a huge negative for other people. I love busy boards. Like, I like a board that just looks like a lot of shit is going on. You know, what was that AKA game? Arborea. Ar- Arborea? Ar- yeah. Ar- Ar- yeah. I don't know. Arborea, Arborea. You look at that board, oh Blah. boy. It just looks like somebody took a paint can and just. Oh, there, there it, is. it is. Yeah, you guys have a copy. We Why do have a copy. It is you? unopened. I just did love, you kickstart it? Yeah, yeah. I love the way it looks, though. Like, because it it catches the eyes. Ugh. We literally. If you got walk, it. if you we walk, bought it because it's pretty. If you walk past that board, if you walk past the Kanban board, you're gonna stop and look at it because it's just a bunch of colors, a lot of stuff going on, and I love that. I love busy boards. I love a busy table. Someone walks by and goes, "Ooh, what is that?" And you go. This is a Lacerda. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you're only the most capable. prestigious of gamers can can play this. Mm-mm, mm-mm. It's like I don't driving think you're a Ferrari. Of this. <laughs> and you make a Ferrari. The only thing that bugs me, I agree with him. I like the busy board. The only thing that bugs me is that for the board that is like this big and it's got all this stuff going on, you are really your workers are in a straight line, <laughs> and I get it. It's a it's a, an efficient factory. That's where all the doors are. Sure, fine, but like, let me put it over here, and let me let someone else's worker go here. I get that it's also easy because Sandra can just literally go down the line, and it makes it easier to keep track of it. Fine, but there's something about it bothers me where I'm like, we're literally spending all of our time in this fucking hallway. But also, all of the actions take up all of that room though yeah like taking the yes, designs is, the is, is that huge. whole corner of the board yeah the, and more the pushing the track is that entire corner of the board yeah 
So then there's that. But yeah, Kanban, great game. I like it a lot. Um, climbing up the ranks for me, at least, slowly but surely. Yeah. Not Siege 6, huh? No one cares about that shit game. Six Siege. We played it again. Sadly. Last so night. Sad. You did? Yeah. So sad. I, was it better? It was it was better in a sense that we actually got to play the game okay. <laughs> properly. Like That's we cool. got to do everything, played it, played it correctly, played it. Um, we played, and with, I'm not holding it like on you. Like mm-hmm. it's a bunch of shit. It's a yeah. whole lot of stuff. Yeah, this like minimal stuff that you got to keep track of. Yeah. Um, the but yeah, yeah, we played wrong. We played wrong enough the first time that like even though I was pretty confident, I wasn't gonna like solidify my love for the game or anything like that i was like i want to give this game another trance with the rules done properly and there were three things you spent so much dang money on it well that too right there were three things three rules we got wrong two of them pretty serious one of them less serious you couldn't go up and down stairs in one turn even if you used a run action overwatch covers the space in front of you not the line immediately to your right and left and then there's a chip you can actually use to re-roll dice one time in the game um and honestly again so like we talked about this a little bit last time but like it is a pretty tight game like it the like the rules make sense they are relatively intuitive at once you start to understand them as far as like a tactical game goes um it does a pretty good job of kind of balancing out like how a turn would work in real time um, but there obviously are still some advantages to, to being able to go first or respond in certain things. Um, and like the game really did come down to um, I was playing with Isaiah on my team and and Dwayne and Anthony were on the other team. Um, <laughs> Dwayne and Anthony, Dang. Dwayne and Anthony, you, Matthew, you Jesus. and your clone. <laughs> Dwayne and. Dang. Matthew. Oh my God. Him and his government representation. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh my gosh. It is late here in the studio, fellas. So and probably outside of this building. Our as team well. and their team. <laughs> we there were two times where we were set up um in Overwatch, but we're not we were too far forward and we weren't covering two spots and so our overwatch didn't proc and their team got to smoke our character without us having any chance to retort. And then there were some die rolls that, did that you know, <laughs> one, one hit away from killing some characters and whatnot. Um, so it was really tight and those decisions really make a big difference. Like it is a game of inches. Um, so I think it's 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 got some quality to it. One, if I can sell it for even a portion, a good chunk of what it I think it's going for right now. After technological issues, <laughs> we are back. All right, so setup for Six Siege is a lot, but apparently Dwayne has a way to fix that. Take 30% of the game. <laughs> <laughs> like fix a little bit of it, right? Right? Is you take you take the production, you take the production, right? And you fucking <laughs> bring it down to there. Fucking, I don't know what you would do about the. I guess just make them fucking tiles or something. Make the furniture tiles. Give me standees. Oh, is the furniture three D? So the. The all-in set had 3D a 3D tile set or 3D furniture set. You the base game comes with cardboard standees, which are objectively just as bad. So dang, and it's just like make it like just make everything fit in one box. Yeah, it's not gonna look nowhere near as good, but you're gonna have the game on the table in an hour and a half less time. <laughs> I do think that they, when you say that, like, I think from a design perspective, because, like, you didn't have to buy the big box. You didn't have to get all the expansions and stuff. It would be interesting to think through a way to streamline the things that you need and getting them into 
either the base box or like the base box plus like an inch, you know, like if they'd like somewhere between the two. Um, because yeah, the problem, part of the problem is, is that like in order to set the game up, so you've, if you've got everything, um, you've got your regular box that's got a lot of the stuff, but then in the big box, you've got one tray that's got the 3D tiles. You've got a tray on the bottom you'll never use because it's actually got the um, the three the, the the cardboard furniture, and then it's like three or four trays in between that has a mix of operators and other components of the game. So you have to go into damn near every single one of those trays to get the operators. To get well, no, to get components. So even oh. if you're just like, I'm just gonna because like the two times we played, we played with the same five characters because they were beginner scenarios, and they came from the base set. Thank God, because again, I didn't have to be like, oh, well, I don't know what because again, the other part of the problem with this game and the reason why I'm not gonna keep it is because I never played the game as a video game. The video game. So like. Pulse, Sledge, Zero, IQ, Ash. None of these things mean anything to me, and I don't know who the characters are. Ash is so fun to play, dude, from what I remember. I There's a 0% chance I have to use the sheet to be like, okay, this is what they look like. Sledge is the only one I know because he's holding a sledgehammer. Big hammer. Right? That's it, right? He make hole in wall. <laughs> Actually, that's Pulse. So. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the guy with the big, the big, the big shield? Montaigne. Yeah. Montaigne. At any rate, I think you're onto something. I think you could streamline some things. There are probably some ways that you could tighten the game up. I think a portion of why people like the idea of it is because it is overproduced, right? Because if you're going to do something that's based on a video game, I think you want that. So, And also, like you said, if you know the game, it's like, oh, man, this is rough. Because, like, and just be, it being in a board game, like, you just have to change some stuff. Like... Mm -hmm. I had a real problem when we first played with the dice and or the health of the operators. But like me thinking, okay, if I can justify it, you're, you're playing with like ranked players who play this game all the time. And when they shoot, they are going to hit that. I, and that that's how I can justify you Pretty much rolling the die and just you're gonna kill that 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 player unless so it happens twice where you don't. Yeah. But um, <laughs> I so I mean the interesting thing that I, I would I was thinking about this and not not enough to want to play the game again. But you'll the first game is kind of an outlier. But even in the second game, we didn't even make it into the third round. I think before we triggered the end game mm -hmm. sequence, right? Yeah. So. I don't know if that's normal, right? I think maybe the games are meant to be a little bit slower. And then maybe, because like we were doing all of these like, oh, I could like, maybe I could, you know, go halfway here and then put myself in Overwatch and be a little bit more conservative where you're like, or I could blow this wall up and jump through and probably kill this guy if I get lucky. And we did a, <laughs> we did a lot of that, right? So the game sped itself up because it was like, oh, I'm exposing myself to take you out, and I got lucky, and I took you out, but then now my guy's exposed, and you come, like, the and number even of, then, how many times did we lean around walls? Oh, twice, right? At the most, like it just like a key function of the game, we were probably not using as much. Dude, in the we, video game, you're always leaning. How many? How many always. of our deployables did we use to to locate <laughs> individuals so you could shoot through? <laughs> Uh, light walls and partitions and stuff like we weren't doing those things we were not playing very tactical we were playing very very heavy-handed so i think that probably impacted our experience to a certain extent and probably shaped like your personal experience with like oh yeah like because you know what if you are standing in clear line of sight in front of a trained special operator dude guy rainbow squad man lady oh, girl whatever <laughs> right and they have a the gun they're gonna shoot you and they're not gonna miss and you're gonna die and like even the way stuff worked like stuff worked <laughs> even the way stuff worked like frags and nitro cells oh. in the so in the board game they're weak like you throw it and it's what two yellow die which is the weakest die if you hit in the space not even next to them if you mm -hmm. hit next to them <laughs> It's one yellow die. Yeah. 
in the game, if you're fucking 30 feet away from that frags. thing, you're dead. Frags are so <laughs> annoying. You are dead. Um, Ash's thing, Ash's ability, is she has the uh, the propelled breaching charge. Mm-hmm. It doesn't. It's not even a full red destruction. It's an orange, which doesn't even destroy castle stuff, which is bullshit. <laughs> because she breaks down walls, like that's her thing. Mm-hmm. And then you're like, you're taking that away. Interesting. So probably some balancing stuff. Because like the the hand grenade thing makes sense from a board game perspective. Because the way the board game works, if you're able to lob those grenades in there, the problem is is that. Because of the sequencing of the game, it's still turn based. It's not actually real time. Yeah. So in real life, in the game, when you see a grenade ding 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 into your room, you have the ability to respond to it. Yeah. In Reaction the board game, time. you don't, right? So I do understand why they have to nerf some of yeah. those things yeah. because like there are plenty of times where it's like, oh, if you guys could have thrown a grenade into some space or this side or the other, I'm like, oh, we would have been toast if it was a real damage dealing object. But fortunately it was like, well no, it's pretty mid. So yeah. At any rate. And like the one last thing I'll say is how um the decoys, the two markers, mm. like one's fake and one's real, but as attackers we won't know. Um unless we you're playing with the hiding thing. As soon as we figure it out, we know where you are all the time, everywhere, Mm -hmm. which like in the game, you don't, which would slow the board game down to a a damn near halt. (laughs) If you like, I said, like maybe every round the defenders get to pick up their minis and place the two markers down somewhere in, in, in different places. Yeah. Um, Well, the other thing too is, is like, you also know where all the stuff is. So you know where the cameras are. Yeah. So you're never surprised by it. So the game we set up, we had uh, CE, CED1 charges. They're like electronic wire charges. And you guys knew where they were. And you knew the impact area. You knew exactly how they worked. So even though they're on the interior of the building, because there was a metal wall, they impacted the area outside of it. But you guys knew that, so you were never going to walk through that spot. With that... How in the game it works is when you have that battery down, Mm -hmm. you can see it on the outside. Like it's, you can see the electricity on the outside too. Okay. And like the cameras and stuff, it's just map knowledge. Like if you learn a map, you know where the cameras are. Okay. But what about like things that you can set up in the game? So like bulletproof cameras, like mutes mutes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe a drone. Yeah. But even then, like, I'm not going to see where it's at on the map unless I use a something to find it, whether that yeah. be like IQ or a drone or something like that. So what's interesting is, is that the game for a non-player is complete miss because there's so much information that's particular to the characters. I'm like, I just don't care. Um, and I'm not going to play the game enough to understand and learn all like 50 unique characters. Yeah. And you'll never play the video game. And I'll never play the video game. And then for a video game player... It's enough stuff is not true to form that it's you're not into it. I just don't think it needed to be a game. Well, that's the reality. We talked about like bad, IPs. good, good, bad IP translations and whatnot. And like some games, yeah, I'm coming to terms with more and more with the idea that like some games just don't don't even bother. I just it's one thing when it's like a game where you know your dudes on a map and you're like rolling die to shoot at zombies and stuff like that and oh you missed and they bite you or you you killed six zombies in one shot it's different from rainbow six that is such a highly tactical first person mm-hmm. shooter game yep you know that for me as someone who played the video game i was like i didn't buy back it because i was like it's just lucky it's not gonna it's <laughs> not gonna I get, I think it actually does a good job for a board game. Like honestly, if it was if I could if I had the ability to main like keep a very trimmed down version, I think I said this last week, like ten or twenty operators total, some of the components and stuff that I need for a couple different maps or whatever, I might keep it. But as it is, there's no good way to do that. So I'm also getting Apex Legends. 
Um, Can't wait for that one to be ruined as well. It could be, but that has like a spawn mechanism. So I think, again, I think from a board game perspective, they're taking a lighter approach to it rather than like the the precision that Six Siege tried to go for. And I think achieves. So, Well, if you like it so much, why don't you marry it? I will. (laughs) I appreciate it. I appreciate the game. I respect the game. It's also unfortunate, too, because like people... uh, hate rated it because of the whole mythic mythic. Fia- mythic fiasco and it's not fair to the game itself but i think there are going to be people out there who are people will be, want to play it and, and if whatnot. you're a war gamer perfect war game for you derek you probably like it a lot i know you're a huge war gamer and mm-hmm. i'm sure rainbow you do, six you do get your little measurement sticks out and get your and little you measurement gotta, stick <laughs> out. it's not a measurement stick it's a line of sight stick you bring, fortunately. Out, bring out your what is that thing called that's got the you should know this your old protractor? A protractor. <laughs> <laughs> you get out your protractor. <laughs> Just yeah. yeah. I don't know. Right. All right. What's the next topic? Or was that it? Was no, that was not even the topic. That just happened to be a total sidebar. So sidebar? Clock. <laughs> <laughs> so last week we talked uh-huh. about games that we wish we enjoyed more than we do. Uh, we plan to talk about the t- this topic last week, but of course we went a little bit long, which is great. So we're going to pick it back up. So instead of games that you wish you enjoyed more, now the topic is games that you wish other people enjoyed more that they don't. I'll go first. Dominant species. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> These motherfuckers. <laughs> Sorry, I don't like cursing. <laughs> Dominant species is my number one game. It's my favorite game. I get to play it like once a year on my birthday. Because that's the only time anyone can tolerate it, apparently. <laughs> but uh, it's not even that, like, eh, it wasn't for me. Like, it's the fact that no matter what, I feel like the game has lately always ended in frustration, like, the last few times. And I'm just like... For you or for someone else? For me, because everyone else is frustrated. Mm. And I'm like, it just, it wasn't fun because no one else had fun and everyone else was mad and... This is poop. Is there a dominant species support group out there somewhere? I wish <laughs> I wish there was. Please find me. R slash dominant species. There's one person in there. It's me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. I think it's a really good game. I think it's well designed. I think it's if you're a big heavy board gamer, it's cool. Mm-hmm. It's got <laughs> it's got territory control in it, you know, which honestly, like that's kind of like the one big thing of the game is fighting for territory, right? There's a lot of other stuff, a lot of other mechanisms and things matter. So I get that people don't like just fighting over space in a game, but I don't know. To me, it's much more than that. And it's I'm not a particular fan of territory control games myself, but that game does it for me. I don't know why, but I wish other people liked it more. Mm. That's fair. That and Catan. The interesting thing, I don't, I don't know... So, like, there is one person in particular who doesn't like dominant species. Two. Who's the other person? He didn't like it. Me? I feel like you didn't have fun either. I like dominant yeah, species. Yeah, no, you like marine. You said meh for the other one. I think I would play marine over over dominant species. But, yeah. <laughs> I haven't played marine. I feel like so you did not have fun better. at all the other day. It was fine. It was fine. I don't think I, it was not my number one game. It'll never be my number one game. Um, I think it falls back into that category of games where I'm like, look, yeah, if if you want to play it, I would play it. I wouldn't say no. I wouldn't begrudge you for asking to play it. No, that's fine. But from the last experience, you guys don't understand. I'm not. I'm never going to ask this group again to play Dominant Species. Wow. What about Marine? I'll invite him to Marine. Oh, wow. All right. Woo. I think otherwise you, me and Derek. It, you can play it on Monday after Ark Nova. Me, you and Derek, maybe. No, because then that's just us. Yeah, Derek will play it too. <laughs> Not you, Derek. Another Derek. <laughs> Not Kev's Derek. Oh. Yeah, I was about to say. Was Not like, to dox anyone. Beep. I'll add that in there. Okay. G- goblin Derek. There you go. My my drunk goblin Derek. <laughs> He's like a little. He's like a little troll. Although he's not drunk anymore, sadly. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But yeah, Dominant Species, if you want to play that with me at FlingCon, we can line it up. Dominant Species, Monopoly, FlingCon. FlingCon. Tapestry. Tapestry. <laughs> <laughs> Monopoly. Absolutely Monopoly. Get the San Antonio Monopoly. Riverwalk, baby. Yeah, you do. Public Library. Do I want about you? Hugo. Hugo the game? Hugo? <laughs> it's an old movie. He probably didn't know about it. Hugo? Yeah. The one with the, the robot? All right. Huh? Did you just take a shot in the dark? Or was that? No. Is there like, there's like a robot in it, right? I don't know. Is it a Disney movie? I've never seen it. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> you go. You go. Okay. Uh, can I do an entire genre of games? Sure. <laughs> Co-op? <laughs> oh, nah. God. No. So. Uh, Into the garbage. Yeah. No. I. Well, it's interesting because like you talk about like this group of, of people. Um, right. I, I would like to play, I would like the opportunity to play some co-op games or like at least not immediately have them like, like no, this is not even an option. Um, yeah. Hugo, the robot boy. The heck? It's okay. like a joint clock. I thought Hugo was about a dog. No. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So. Because like my actually my, my knee jerk reaction was viticulture, but then I'm like, well, it's actually just one person who really doesn't like viticulture. Yeah, I like but viticulture. Like, our, like the Sunday groups at, at Black Potion, like they, you know, like uh, Ro really liked it. I think Madison likes it. Um, I like think Aaron it. likes it. I mean, you like it just oh. fine. Like you're not opposed to it. Yeah. Enrique even likes it. It's, it's the, literally just one person. It's the other lady in this, <laughs> the one lady in this house. Uh, not a fan. And then, like, when it comes to, like, not liking co-ops, it's just the two of you. So, but, like, you guys are my group, right? You guys are the group. So, like, those games are games, like, types of games I'd like to play more. I'd like to, I'd, you know, it'd, it'd be fun to try uh, Spirit Island a little bit more, Daybreak, um, other stuff like that. Like, Pandemic Legacy, I'd like to be able to play those. <laughs> Literally the number two ranked game, number three ranked game or whatever it is on I'll be on, okay, so I'll be honest with you. I started a, a, a pandemic campaign with our friends. Mm. And if you ever watch this, I don't blame you. It's fine. Not She's not a gamer, her and her husband. We started the first one. They never, ever wanted to come back to play anything else again. Had you played other games with them before? Very infrequently. Yeah, because that's... military... Come on, man. You, you committed a legacy game to people that were inconsistent? It was the only people we knew in the area at the time, yeah. you know? And we have, we had played games with, you know, that here? at least her before, yeah, before we left. Oh. And then we left, and then we came back, and, you know, all of our lives are different, yeah. you know? But while, yes, it was more interesting to me than normal pandemic, it is still pandemic with, like, a story, which, and that's the whole point of a legacy game, and I get it. It just yeah. was like, but who wins? It's interesting because I don't honestly know anything about the legacy versions. Like, I don't know what makes them so good in so many people's eyes. Because season one and season two are are both, like, ranked in the top 10 or 15 or something like that, right? Yeah. I know one of them is ranked in the top three, whatever, it's two or three, right? I will say it's an improvement on yeah. Pandemic. I enjoyed it more than I would have a normal game of Pandemic. So sure. if you like pandemic, you like co-op games. But I don't think pandemic story. is pandemic in the top fifty. No, it's probably like in the top two hundred at least. So just like how does it? How does like the legacy aspect of it all of a sudden make it one of the number the top five games? I think the fact that you have a story that permanently changes the game as you go. Because even in the first scenario, we completed it. We permanently changed the board. Yeah. Okay. And if you have that for ten more campaigns, where you're permanently changing the board and the game and. Everything like that's cool. Are you looking up its rating? Mm-hmm. Um, it's pandemic rated. Let us know when rated. We did rated. We did Clank Legacy. Yeah, that was awesome. And every at the end of every game, someone wins mm. and gets a reward for it. Yeah, very cool. Um, but then there's an overall winner of the entire campaign too, mm-hmm. which also very cool. Speaking of, that should be getting here so this year, I think. Hopefully, so part two. Oh, okay. yeah, which we backed a long time ago. Yeah. So it'd be cool. You guys, we can start a campaign. I recently had a much better Clank experience. 
Steven introduced me to the bass clank game. And it was a lot more fun because I understood that using the ability to walk places <laughs> <laughs> was really important and should be prioritized. Yeah. <laughs> Pandemic the- is a 7.5. At uh, 147. There you yeah. go. Top 150. And then somehow, by turning it into a legacy, it makes it the number like three game. Because even the season- I don't know. So I feel like something about a legacy game, just like it's. Because I know we need to get back on Betrayal, but yeah. Siege has just taken the, the, yeah. the two slots there, yeah. which we will. Yeah. But um, for some reason, like, I already like Betrayal. But playing the legacy of Betrayal, just like something about it was like, oh, nice. There's like progression. Like The feeling of progression is huge. I can make family heirlooms with the items that I grab. And the board is like, although it's a different house, like there's like familiar rooms that come up and do different things depending on past games. Some, I just feel like something about a legacy game, it just gives you that, like, oomph, there's more. I, yeah. It's like... And there's... I wonder what we'll get next game. Yeah. I wonder what, what's going to be in the next game. Yeah. But I, I agree across the board, but still, to go from 147 <laughs> to... is it, I think it's three, right? It's two or three, yeah. Because Brass is one. Is Gloomhaven Deserve two? Deservedly, baby. Is Gloomhaven two? I don't know. And then Pandemics 3, yeah. I think. It, it, three or some four. combination of that. It's in the top five. So that's a huge swing, right? That's insane. So it's just, what is it about that? Is it because Pandemic is a very accessible game? Maybe. And that the legacy creates an opportunity to take an accessible game depth. and give it more depth? And also, while still being very accessible? We also had a real life Imagine pandemic. Catan Legacy. Is that it? Do you think people are just... Like exercising their demons to the game. <laughs> I actually think that sales went down for that game. No, I just I just saw it and it was like it raised it. Really? Yeah. In twenty twenty. Because people googling pandemic. Is there a pandemic? It and saying, it, order the pandemic board game now. It said in twenty twenty it raised it to number twelve. That's crazy, dude. Yeah. Wow. So it peaked and then it's dropped hard since then in three years four years yeah. i mean to go from 12 to 147 i think is a pretty significant drop yeah i mean there's also been a lot of other games because i think pandemic was just it existed and it was like fine and then a lot of people picked it up mm-hmm. and were rating it but there's been so many games that come out that are awesome or did or, or did quote unquote serious gamers come back and like rate it more critically now that, they've, that too. they've like it's no longer like because, like, Pandemic was one of the first, like, five, like, big kid board games that I've ever I ever played. And I was like, this is amazing. Same. Me too. Right? Yeah. And I I still keep my my copy around as a, just as a, in case of meeting new people and whatnot, mm-hmm. being like, hey, this is a really good, simple example of a co-op game. Co-op. I, repl- I don't like co-op, so I no, replaced yeah, no. it with Plague. Yeah, totally. Yeah. For me, it is it is one of... I don't want to go into because this is a different topic, but it is one of a selection of games that I will take out for new players, people who have maybe played or never played a game before. Good topic. Yep. And say, hey, this is an option. And, and this is, yep. So we'll save that topic for another day. But yeah, so yeah, I guess, I guess I'm going to go broadly with, um, I mean, if I want to be explicit, we'll say Spirit Island because it's a good game. Be fun to play it more with, with you guys. Can are... play during your Thursday days. Okay, <laughs> I don't actually. I don't know if I'd. I don't know. Because is it more it than does, two players? Does it play five. I think it's only four. It might only. It play plays four. up to four. Yeah, I wouldn't prioritize that with that group though. I think it'd be all right. I also just don't know because there's a certain point where like, I think the more players you introduce to that game, be, even though it's a cooperative game the space in between your turns and like again trying to do the whole like well your plays impact my stuff and then you're just trying to negotiate more of that i think that actually might become worse that's so poop i don't want to do that i just want to yeah. do what i do and if it hurts you hell yeah <laughs> if it hurts you oh, yeah. <laughs> i'm trying to win baby oh me doing this to take something from you 
Yay! Confirm. <laughs> BGA, confirm. My turn. <laughs> yeah, so that's mine. All right, and that will conclude the topic for us, except until we do Dwayne's, because I forgot he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot you you goed it to him. Yeah, yeah. you go. Yeah, he goed it. Um. <laughs> so I'm going to... I'm gonna go really quick. Earthquake in the studio. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go quick because I have a serious answer, and then I have kind of a maybe slightly <laughs> little bit hee hee answer. My serious Wait one up, is. Well, let's get your tee one first. Unmatched. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, I really, really, really like Unmatched. I minus Buffy have all of the Unmatched sets. Do you want Buffy? No. Why do you want Buffy? I don't care about Buffy. If you didn't grow up playing, like watching Buffy or Angel, who's Angel? Really? <laughs> I didn't watch Buffy. Oh, he didn't. Angel was a vampire uh, who dated Buffy. Is he a character? In this? Yeah, oh, and he wow. had a spinoff, a five season spinoff, Vampire that, Diaries. No, it's it's called <laughs> Angel. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good. Um, At any rate, so you don't have the Buffy one, but you like. Yeah, the system. I really, really like it. Um, Restoration Games. Apparently, it came from a Star Wars um, game of the same kind of way it worked. Um, but it's just a skirmish game. But it's through cards, so you play cards for movement and attacks and defense and anything like that. Super cool, super simple. Can be quick. Mostly, most of the time, it's quick. Um, <laughs> but I can think of two people, other people who actually do like it. Everybody else has just been kind of, eh, eh, it was, it was fine. It was whatever. I'm one of the latter people. <laughs> <laughs> um, I th- have you, have you played it? Yeah. Okay. Are you? I never played it. Oh, I think you'd like it. I think you would like it. I don't know. Hey, what did, hey, what did you think of uh, Knockdown, the game that we played where the, the board... You know, see, that's kind of what I was thinking about, and I was like, mm. Did you like that game? It was me. Yeah. If you, like, if you did not like that game, I think you would probably like Unmatched less. And my rationale for that being, there is more variability in Unmatched. So maybe you like that because it's more variable, like, oh, they've got totally different powers and abilities and play styles versus knockdown is a little bit more balanced. And then it's just like with new characters, they're always bringing in some kind of new like idea that is just like super cool to just even see like, oh, new character. I wonder what they do. It's really cool. Obunaga. Yeah. Honestly, my biggest thing is like Shakespeare. We're never going to just play a two player game. Right. But. You could. The next time we do have just a me and you like time, bring it. Bring me, well, whatever your favorite set mm-hmm. is. Yeah. If or fact, bring you every can play a couple a three player game. You can. You, you can play three and four. It goes up to four. Oh, the, what the hell? I thought it was one v one. The problem is, is teams. at some point, in t- no, there are no teams. Oh. No, yeah, three three You're, player. It's three free players, for all. free for all. Four player, you can do free for all, but it's like you want to do two v two. That's yeah. dumb. Well, and that's the problem with three player because. Somebody's gonna get picked, yeah, to king, get the person to be the person out. Well, not necessarily king make, but like to be the person that gets that mm. gets taken out. And then of course, you can be king make because if you target me, say it's the two of you and me, and you two target me, I probably won't necessarily be able to equally distribute my aggression between the two of you. So if I target you, then I just leave you vulnerable for Dwayne. See, that's dumb. Yeah, just leave it at one v one. No, that's fair. But that is one of the things that I really like it is the characters and things that they do. Like, and now they're grabbing IPs, so they have Jurassic Park, where usually it was just royalty free characters. That's the word, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Royalty free characters. So people Shakespeare. like fucking copyright free Shakespeare, the genie, Sherlock? Houdini, fucking Sherlock, people like that. Um, now they're getting Marvel characters. They got Deadpool and. Squirrel Girl, and now they've then they've See, got Jurassic Park. With, I don't want to play with those nope. the Marvel ones. I'm I'm so marveled out. Dude. They've got Jurassic Park. Give me both, brother. Um, like, like 
the T-Rex from Jurassic Park introduced big characters that take up two spots Do the roar. on the board. And it's just a giant fucking mini in the middle of the board. That's pretty cool. The Raptors, they have that. It's split into three different characters. So it's three Raptors on the board at the same time. Very cool. Mm. Which is, yeah, it's really, I really like it. Um, but yeah, that is my serious answer. I really like it. Yeah, some people just kind of my tee <laughs> <laughs> my tee <tee-hee> is Uno. <laughs> <laughs> now, of course, there is a specific group of people you play Uno with. Your mom. That is not this group. I fucking love Uno, dude. If you pulled out a deck of Uno cards, oh my god! Oh, it's just because <laughs> it's like. Getting fucking having somebody throw down a draw two on you, right? And you're like, and of course, people house rule it. Like, nobody plays Uno the correct way, I think, anymore at this point. So I like, just get up and leave. You stack, right? You get it, you get a plus two thrown on you. You're like, oh yeah, oh yeah, fucking my own bitch, plus four on you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so stupid and fun. And if that doesn't, like, Dwayne also likes Cards Against Humanity. <laughs> that you know, is games, don't games, ev- games don't like that. you ever exploding kittens don't was his favorite you games like ever that. Yeah, put that shit out in the universe. <laughs> games like that he ever wants to again. play all the time. <clears throat> exploding um, kittens. His favorite card. Cards, Cards Against, against humanity. humanity is the bigger, blacker. Cards Against Humanity Isaiah edition. Cards Against <laughs> Humanity are for the are for the fucking cool kids in high school that peaked in high school and have jack shit going on in their life now and if you're watching subscribe because <laughs> hey. you have nothing else better going exploding on exploding kittens actually has a tv show coming out i know it's crazy <laughs> i know just a guy on it his is farm the most sacrilegious thing on the planet and i i adore it for that <laughs> but yeah that was my tee answer it's legit it's though. uno i was gonna, I'm glad you didn't say muffin die Okay, and with that uh, waste of our last minute wow. and a half here, him <laughs> talking about Uno, we will conclude this episode, this week's episode of the Board and Scale podcast. Thank you guys for joining us. Go ahead and follow me and Kevin. Dwayne doesn't deserve it this episode for even bringing up Uno. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to see more, like and subscribe to see more. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>